Good afternoon. Welcome to English 30-1. I'll be your host, Alan Friesen. Yay. So today, we're going to be talking about the literary device glossary assignment. For those of you who are not in any of my classes, this might not seem very relevant to you. However, we are going to be looking at a really interesting way for you to study, perhaps, more standardized tests, especially in English. For those of you who are in Alberta, doing this on your own time will help you with Part B of the diploma exam. I'd like to give credit to this to my teacher, Lance Bella, Bala, Lance Bala who taught me about this. So, what we're going to be looking at is the introductory passage to the novel Neuromancer by William Gibson. If you've not read the novel, this lecture will contain some spoilers. Fair warning. We're going to be looking at the very first line, the sky above the port was the color of television tuned to a dead channel. And we're going to be explaining the metaphor that is present within this line. Now, I'm going to be off screen for most of this presentation, typing madly away. So see me. Here I go. All right. <clears throat> so, a literary device glossary entry has five parts to it. First of all, we've got a description of what literary device we're looking at. In this case, it's metaphor. And then I've given a description of what metaphor is in my own words. <laughs> it's metaphor. It's not like you can really explain it in very many different ways. This was off the top of my head and was not with the dictionary. I would encourage you to come up with your own definitions just because it helps you to think a little bit better when you're doing this. And then I give the quote, the sky above the Corvus color of television tuned to a dead channel. Notice the quotation marks on the other side. I have the title of the book and I have the page number where it's found, all in brackets. Now the program that I'm using, which is Q10 by the way, Q10, it's a very nice minimalistic text editor. Full screen, it's easy to type, it's easy to write on, you can change all sorts of fun options with it, including font and layout and all that sort of stuff. But it does not include support for italics or underlining. This should be italicized or underlined because it is a, the name of a novel. This is the proper MLA format. Now, I'm not going to be writing out the entire thing. I'm just going to be doing this in point form, but I'm going to be going over it in enough, in enough depth that hopefully you'll understand what this assignment is all about. So we start off our function with the context. So we're going to give the function, or the, sorry, we're going to give the context of this quote. Right before this quote, we see nothing except we have the title of the section, which is Chiba City Blues. This is important, this is relevant. If you were to actually look up what Chiba is, or where Chiba is, you would find out that it's in Japan. It's not China, which is what I thought the first three times I read the book. It's just a weird way of spelling China. Chiba, it's a prefecture in Japan. And in fact, in the book itself, after the quote, we do see a reference to Japanese. Let me just get it out here, because obviously I'm not prepared, and don't have this in class. Sky above the port is the color of television tuned to a dead channel. It's not like I'm using, Case heard someone <laughs> saying, as he shouldered his way through the crowd around the door of the chat. It's like my body's developed this massive drug deficiency. It was a sprawl voice and a sprawl joke. The Chatsuba was a bar for professional expatriates. You could drink there for a week and never hear two words in Japanese. So because of that and because of the title of the section, we know that this takes place in Japan. So the context of the quote, right before, it's China's Archiva City Blues, so we know approximately where this is taking place. And right after, we have Case walking into a bar for expatriates, which are people who have moved away from their homes. If you, as Canadians, were to move to South Korea and teach there, you would consider be considered expatriates. So that's the context of this quote. And really, you don't need a lot more than this. You need to explain the fact that it takes place in Japan. You need to explain maybe a little bit about who Case is and what he's like. So Case, as we know, is a computer hacker. He is no longer able to take drugs, which is why this passage about the drug deficiency is important, perhaps foreshadowing what is to come in the rest of the novel. But that is context. It's not a lot. So concept then. What you're going to look at in concept is the idea of metaphor. And again, you're going to explain metaphor, what it is here. 
So a metaphor, again, is a comparison between two things. So what is being compared is the sky above the port and a dead channel. Now, the idea of dead, deadness, that's going to come up in the connection. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the concept. But that is an important part of the discussion of this literary device. So, metaphor, comparison between two things. Now, what's interesting about this quote is that the color of television tuned to a dead channel in 2012 is blue. If you buy a, buy a brand new TV at the store and you turn it on, it's not on any station, it looks blue. Sort of like this projector here, if I were to put it on to video. This is the color of a dead channel in 2012. However, when this book was written in 1983 and in 1984, a dead channel was flickering black and white squares. We all sort of have a picture of this in our minds. What's interesting to me about this passage is that in 50 years, perhaps we will have forgotten the original meaning of it. And perhaps instead of this novel opening with this very dark and, and grim sort of image, we're going to have a happy blue sky over the port in Chiba City. But it's not the original context of it. But we need to talk about metaphor. It's exactly the, the literal explanation of what the two things are being compared. So we've got a port and dead channel. Literally, tell me what these are. So we've got the port, a port where docks or ships come in. And we've got the color of television, as I explained. So what this is, is this is a reference to the grayness of the sky. And it's also setting the tone of the book. If it started off, the sky above the port was the color of a happy kids television show with balloons and fuzzy animals tuned to a kids movie like Barney, we would have a much different introductory tone than what we've got here. In the fictional Barney example, it's light, it's playful, there's kids' toys, there's balloons, it's colorful. That would probably denote that the book is cheerful and enthusiastic and all sorts of wonderful things. But the fact that the sky above the board was the color of television tuned to a TED channel indicates that the tone of the book is grim, perhaps unpleasant. Most certainly it's going to be a serious book. So we get all of this just from discussing the metaphor and just from discussing this one passage and what it means. So you can see here that this concept discussion is quite lengthy. I mean, we're at least a paragraph and a half, if not two paragraphs, just talking about the idea of the metaphor and unpacking the device. So what I mean by unpack is you're not just saying this is a metaphor and this is what the metaphor is, but you're taking the time to carefully unravel and explain what the metaphor is, what the litter device in general is but what it also means. So this is one of the biggest parts of this entire discussion. And then we move on to the connection. So we need to make sure, this is very important when you're doing this, the literary device must connect somehow to the entire text. You need to make a case that this first line is relevant to a significant part of the rest of the book. You could argue that this talks about the setting of the book. So we've got the idea of, um, of Chiba, or Japan, and how the idea of, of alienness or the other, the other is important in this book. You could talk about the idea of technology. We're talking about the color of television, not the sky above the port was the color of a glass of Earl Grey tea which could also be as accurate, but when we're talking about television, we're specifically referencing technology, and this is definitely a book about technology. So you would want to explain how the idea that we're starting off with an initial metaphor about technology, how that actually reflects on the rest of the text, in that it is about technology as well. And then we have the idea of dead or death. This is where the spoilers are going to come into place. It's a serious book, and with most other serious books, you've got characters who die. So, tuned to a dead channel, we have an indirect reference to mortality, including the death of Porto slash Armitage, who dies in the book, as well as Riviera. So, you could make the argument that death in this initial reference foreshadows these deaths that are to come in the book as well. 
But because we're, there's no reference to Armitage, there's no reference to Quarto, there's none of that in this initial section. All this is, is it's really an indirect reference. It's an inference. It's a very light instance of foreshadowing. So what you would need to do is you would need to talk about all of this. You'd have to talk about Chiba Japan. You'd have to talk about technology. You'd have to talk about dead and death in order for this to be a substantially good literary device. And especially at the 30 level, what I'm looking for in terms of your literary device is not just picking up on one or two or even three little points. I want it to be in depth throughout the entire device from the context, explaining clearly what happens before and after the quote, Clearly, not in depth, but clearly. The concept certainly needs to be unpacked and very clearly explained, and the connection you need to go into a great amount of detail about how it actually connects to the text. Now, some words that you need to avoid. The device flows or allows the text to flow. Flow is a word that students sometimes use because it sounds good and they're not really going deep enough into what it actually means. Don't just say that it allows the text to flow, but explain what the metaphor does and how it works. So try to avoid that sort of superficial word and that sort of superficial approach, if at all possible. If you follow this guide, if you follow this advice, then I believe that your literary device will be very good. And that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Sayonara. You can't see me wave, but I am.